Okay, hi everyone. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about how to count atoms, how to calculate the molar mass, and also how to use molar mass in conversion problems. So chemical formulas tell us both the elements that we have present in a compound and the number of each element that we have present. And there's different ways that we can represent this. So one way is using formulas, which I'll show in a second. And the other way is using pictures like I have here. So if we look at this picture, the two big circles with polka dots, those stand for the carbon. The middle circle with the stripes, that is our oxygen, and the little white circles, those are the hydrogen. So if we look at this, we can find out that we have two carbon atoms, an oxygen, and six hydrogen atoms. So when we go ahead and write the formula, there's actually a couple different ways we can write it. Um, I could write something like C2OH6, that'd be perfectly valid. Um, I have it written here just to show that the oxygen and the hydrogen are bonded together. But we can see we list the elements that we have, and then the subscripts tell us about each of them with the quantity. So there are three different things that can um, describe the number of atoms we have in a compound. The first thing is subscripts. So these are the little numbers um, that come directly after an element symbol, and they apply to the element right in front of them. So for example, if we have BAF2, okay, there is a two after the fluorine, and notice there is not a number after the barium, after the BA. So in chemistry, I'm gonna say this again, I've said it many times, chemists are lazy. So if there's not a number written, we assume it to be one. So in this case, I have one barium and two fluorine. So we can also have parentheses. And when you have parentheses, the number right outside is going to kind of look like a subscript. It would be a little number down below, um, but the number right outside the parentheses applies to everything inside the parentheses. So when we look at this example, we have aluminum nitrate. So we have the aluminum, and then in the parentheses, we have the NO3. So the three that's in the parentheses applies to the O, and the three that's outside the parentheses at the very end is going to apply to both the N and the O. So if we go ahead and figure this out, aluminum has one atom. We have three nitrogen. And then we're going to multiply three times three to give us nine oxygen. Okay, so we multiply in this case. And then the other thing we can have is a coefficient. So this is a big number in front and applies to every element in the following compound. So if I have three BAF2, Okay, the two, remember, is a subscript and only applies to the fluorine, but the three is going to apply to both the barium and the fluorine. So in this case, I have three barium and six fluorine. Okay. So then this leads us to molar mass, and molar mass is the mass of one mole of a compound in grams, and it has units of grams per mole. And one thing I want to point out, the molar mass of an atom, so a single atom, is equal to its atomic mass. So we can find that on the periodic table. When it comes to calculating molar mass, there's a couple of different steps. First, you want to list the elements that are present in the compound. Then determine the number of atoms present for each element. Um, so that's where we're going to use those subscripts and the parentheses to think about that information. Then we're going to use the periodic table to find the molar mass of each element multiply the molar mass of each element by the number of atoms of that element, and then we add everything up, and don't forget your units of grams per mole. Okay, so we're actually going to try this out with an example of calcium hydroxide. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to calculate the molar mass of CaOH, which is calcium hydroxide. So the first thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and list all of my atoms I have. So I have a calcium I have an oxygen, and then I have a hydrogen. And then I like to list the number of each that I have. So I have one calcium. I have two oxygens. Remember that two applies to everything in the parentheses. So I have two oxygen and two hydrogen. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and write down the masses of each. And I'm going to find this on the periodic table. Now, different periodic tables can have slightly different values, and that's okay. Um, so I'm going to use the values I have on my periodic table. Yours might be slightly different. That's fine. Um, so this is what we're going to get. Okay. Um, so once we have this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply these two together to get the numbers, and then we'll add them up. 
So for my calcium, I get 40.01. From my oxygen, I get 31.98. And then for my hydrogen, I get 2.02. .02. Okay, and if I add all of that up together, that gives me an answer of 74.01 grams per mole. Now, one thing I want to point out here, for molar mass problems, I recommend that you always just round to the hundreds place. hundredths. Okay. Um, that's just because if you look at different periodic tables, they have different values for rounding and just makes things a little simpler. Just always round to the hundredths place. So that is the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. Okay, so we can also use molar mass in conversions. So one thing I want you to remember is molar mass allows us to convert between grams and moles because it has both of those in its equation. So whenever we're performing the conversion between grams and moles, we always have one mole, okay? So for molar mass, one mole is equal to however many grams you calculated it being. So let's go ahead, we're gonna do this example now with um, 3.7 moles of table salt, which is sodium chloride. We wanna find out how much it weighs. Okay, so now we wanna find the molar, or Okay, so now we want to find out how much 3.7 moles of table salt, NaCl, would weigh. Well, remember we always want to underline what we're given. So we're given 3.7 moles of table salt. What are we being asked to find? How much it weighs. We then want to think about conversion factors. So since we're going between moles and the weight, which is going to be in grams, we're gonna to wanna to use molar mass. So we're gonna to need to find the molar mass, which I often abbreviate MM. So the molar mass of sodium chloride. So again, I'm gonna list the elements I have. So I have a sodium, I have a chlorine, and I have one of each. I'm then going to look on my periodic table to find their masses. So sodium is 22.99, chlorine, is 35.45. So multiply across. And then add those together. So that gives me a molar mass of 58.44 grams per mole. Okay. So that's one step, but that's not my final answer because it's not asking for the molar mass, it's asking about the weight. So now I'm going to do factor label table. So remember, I draw my horizontal line, and then in my very first spot is going to go my given, which is 3.7 moles of NaCl. Okay, if I have moles up top, I need to have moles on the bottom. That way those units will cancel out. And then I want to think, I want to convert from moles to grams, so that means I'm going to use my molar mass. Okay, remember molar mass is always grams per one mole. So my 58.44 grams goes on top, and on the denominator is my one. So numbers up on top, I multiply them together. So we're going to take 3.7 times 58.44, and that's my answer for my calculator. But I still need to think about sig figs. Okay, those things from earlier in this year, they don't go away, okay? So I need to round my answer to two sig figs, what my given is. So I'm going to chop it off between the one and the six. So if I go ahead and round this, my answer is 220 grams. Okay, so I hope that helps with that one. Okay, and then we can also do multi-step conversions where we combine different conversion factors to complete multi-step conversion problems. So just a reminder of two that we've talked about specific to chemistry. We have Avogadro's number, which relates the number of things, and this can be atoms, it can be molecules, it can be formula units, it could be donuts. In this case, we're going to focus on more of the scientific ones, um, and relates it to moles. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things is equal to one mole. 
And then we have molar mass, which remember relates moles and then the mass in grams, okay? So we always have the number of grams that we calculate is always equal to one mole. Um, so one really, really important thing I want to point out, when we're performing chemistry conversions, mole is often the common link. So if you're not sure what to do, usually your first step is you want to get to the mole, and then after you get to the mole, you can get to your final answer from there. So when in doubt, go to the mole. Okay, so let's try a final example for today. How many molecules of water are in 32 grams of water? Okay, so this one's going to be a multi-step conversion problem, but we're going to start just exactly the same way as everyone else. So we're going to start by underlining what we're given and circling what we are asked to find. So we are given 32 grams of water, and we are being asked to find how many molecules of water. Okay. So to get to molecules, I know I'm going to need to use Avogadro's number. That's going to be the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole. And remember, we can use this number to describe atoms, molecules, ions, donuts, whatever you want. Um, in this case, we're going to do molecules because that's what we're asked to find. And then the other thing we're going to need is the molar mass of water. Okay, so find the molar mass, I'm going to list my elements. So I have two hydrogen and one oxygen. If I look up on the periodic table, hydrogen is 1.01, .01, oxygen is 15.99. Add those up and then we're going to get our answer for that part. So 18.01 grams per mole. And that's my molar mass of my water. So now we're going to go ahead and set up our factor label table. Okay, remember my given always goes in the first spot. So that's going to be my 32 grams of water. And whatever I have up top, I put the same thing on the diagonal. So we're going to go 2 grams of water. Well, my... Conversion factor that has grams in it is my molar mass. So the 18.01 grams goes on the bottom. And remember, molar mass is always grams per one mole. So that's going to go on top. So those two units cancel out. Now, whatever unit I have up here, I want the same unit on the bottom. And this time, I want to go to my answer, which is my molecules. And be careful when using the abbreviation for molecules versus moles. Pretty similar. Okay, so for every one mole I have, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, so now those units cancel out. So now it's time to go ahead and actually put this in my calculator. Remember, numbers up on top, I multiply, and then I divide by what's on the bottom. So I'm going to take 32, and I'm going to multiply it by Avogadro's number. But remember, I have a special way to enter it. So I'm going to type 6.02, and then the second button, and then the EE, which is the comma. That gives me my E, which means scientific notation, and then 23. That's my numerator. Now I'm going to divide by what's in the bottom, 18.01, which gives me this number. I still need to think about sig figs, okay? So I'm going to round 1.069. Well, that's going to get rounded to 1.1. And then remember, I don't write E because that's calculator speak. I need to put it in scientific notation. So 1.1 times 10 to the 24th molecules of water. Okay, so I hope that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions. Bye.